The laryngeal theory is a widely accepted hypothesis in the historical linguistics of the Indo-European languages positing that the Proto-Indo-European language had a series of phonemes beyond those reconstructed with the comparative method. The most accepted variant of the theory further posits that these phonemes were «laryngeal» consonants of an indeterminate place of articulation towards the back of the mouth. The theory aims to produce greater regularity in the reconstruction of pi phonology than from the reconstruction that is produced by the comparative method. Most notably, it seeks to extend the general occurrence of the Indo-European oblaut to syllables with reconstructed vowel phonemes other than asterisk e or asterisk o. In its earlier form, see below, the theory postulated two sounds in pi. Combined with a reconstructed asterisk e or asterisk o, the sounds produce vowel phonemes that would not otherwise be predicted by the rules of oblaut. The theory received considerable support after the decipherment of Hittite, which revealed it to be an Indo-European language. Many Hittite words were shown to be derived from pi, with a phoneme represented as h corresponding to one of the hypothetical pi sounds. Subsequent scholarship has established a set of rules by which an ever-increasing number of reflexes in daughter languages may be derived from pi roots. The number of explanations thus achieved and the simplicity of the postulated system have both led to widespread acceptance of the theory. In its most widely accepted version, the theory posits three phonemes in pi, h, h and h see below. Other daughter languages inherited the derived sounds, resulting from their merger with pi short vowels and their subsequent loss. The phonemes are now recognized as consonants, related to articulation in the general area of the larynx, where a consonantal gesture may affect vowel quality. They are regularly known as laryngeal, but the actual place of articulation for each consonant remains a matter of debate. See below. The laryngeals get their name because they were believed by Hermann Mahler and Albert Cuny to have had a pharyngeal, epiglottal, or glottal place of articulation, involving a constriction near the larynx. While this is still possible, many linguists now think of «laryngeals» or some of them, as having been velar or uvular. The evidence for their existence is mostly indirect, as will be shown below, but the theory serves as an elegant explanation for a number of properties of the pi vowel system that made no sense until the theory, such as the «independent» Schwa's as in asterisk ter father. Also, the hypothesis that pi schwa asterisk was actually a consonant, not a vowel, provides an elegant explanation for some apparent exceptions to Brugman's law in Indic languages. Topic: History. The beginnings of the theory were proposed by Ferdinand de Saussure in 1879, in an article chiefly devoted to something else altogether demonstrating that asterisk a and asterisk o were separate phonemes in pi. In the course of his analysis, Saussure proposed that what had then been reconstructed as long vowels asterisk a and asterisk o, alternating with asterisk was actually an ordinary type of pi oblaut. That is, it was an alternation between E grade and zero grade like in regular oblaut further explanations below, but followed by a previously unidentified element. This 
element accounted for both the changed vowel color and the lengthening short asterisk e becoming long asterisk a or asterisk o so rather than reconstructing asterisk a asterisk o and asterisk as others had done before, so Sir proposed something like asterisk a alternating with asterisk a and asterisk eo with asterisk o, where a and o represented the unidentified elements. So Sir called them simply coefficients semantiques, which was the term for what are now in English more usually called resonance, that is, the six elements present in pi which can be either consonants or vowels depending on the sounds they are adjacent to, asterisk y w r l m n. These views were accepted by a few scholars, in particular Hermann Mahler, who added important elements to the theory. Saussure's so observations, however, did not achieve any general currency, as they were still too abstract and had little direct evidence to back them up. This changed when Hittite was discovered and deciphered in the early 20th century. Hittite had a sound or sounds written with symbols from the Akkadian syllabary conventionally transcribed as H, as in te e hi, I put, am putting. This consonant did not appear to be clearly related to any of the consonants then reconstructed for pi, and various unsatisfactory proposals were made to explain this consonant in terms of the pi consonant system as it had then been reconstructed. It remained for Jerzy Kurilovich Etudes I, 1935, to propose that these sounds lined up with Saussure's conjectures. He suggested that the unknown consonant of Hittite was in fact a direct reflex of the coefficients semantics that Saussure had proposed. Their appearance explained some other matters as well, they explained, for example, why verb roots containing only a consonant and a vowel always have long vowels. For example, in asterisk do, give, the new consonants allowed linguists to decompose this further into asterisk day. This not only accounted for the patterns of alternation more economically than before by requiring fewer types of oblaut, but also brought the structure of these roots into line with the basic pi pattern which required roots to begin and end with a consonant. The lateness of the discovery of these sounds by Indo-Europeanists is largely because Hittite and the other Anatolian languages are the only Indo-European languages where at least some of them are attested directly and consistently as consonantal sounds. Otherwise, their presence is to be inferred mostly through the effects they have on neighboring sounds, and on patterns of alternation that they participate in. When a laryngeal is attested directly, it is usually as a special type of vowel and not as a consonant. <laughs> Varieties of laryngeals There are many variations of the laryngeal theory. Some scholars, such as Oswald Zemmerani, reconstruct just one laryngeal. Some follow Jan Puvel's reconstruction of eight or more in his contribution to evidence for laryngeals, ed. Werner Winter. Most scholars work with a basic three. Asterisk H, the neutral. Laryngeal Asterisk H, the a coloring laryngeal Asterisk H, the o coloring 
Laryngeal some scholars suggest the existence of a fourth consonant, asterisk H, which differs from asterisk H in not being reflected as Anatolian H but being reflected, to the exclusion of all other laryngeals, as Albanian H when word initial before an originally stressed vowel. E.g. pi asterisk H R I Y E H testicle yields Albanian herdi testicle, but Hittite arki testicle, whereas pi asterisk H T K O S bear yields alb ari bear, but Hittite heart ag ga equals hartka cultic official bear person. When there is an uncertainty whether the laryngeal is asterisk h or asterisk h, the symbol asterisk ha may be used. Another such theory, but much less generally accepted, is Winfred P. Lehman's view, on the basis of inconsistent reflexes in Hittite, that asterisk h was actually two separate sounds. He assumed that one was a glottal stop and the other a glottal fricative. Some direct evidence for laryngeal consonants comes from Anatolian. Pi asterisk a is a fairly rare sound, and in an uncommonly large number of good etymologies it is word initial. Thus pi traditional asterisk anti in front of and facing greater than Greek anti against Latin anti in front of before Sanskrit anti near in the presence of but in Hittite there is a noun hans, front, face, with various derivatives, hantesi, first, and so on, pointing to a pi root noun asterisk h ent, face, of which asterisk h e n t i would be the locative singular. It does not necessarily follow that all reconstructed forms with initial asterisk a should automatically be rewritten asterisk h e. Similarly, the traditional pi reconstruction for sheep is asterisk o w i a y stem, not an i stem, whence Sanskrit avi, Latin ovis, Greek ois. But Luwian has hawi, indicating instead a reconstruction asterisk h e w i s. Topic. Pronunciation Considerable debate still surrounds the pronunciation of the laryngeals and various arguments have been given to pinpoint their exact place of articulation. Firstly the effect these sounds have had on adjacent phonemes is well documented. The evidence from Hittite and Uralic is sufficient to conclude that these sounds were «guttural» or pronounced rather back in the buccal cavity. The same evidence is also consistent with the assumption that they were fricative sounds as opposed to approximants or stops, an assumption which is strongly supported by the behavior of laryngeals in consonant clusters. Topic asterisk H It has been suggested by Beeks 1995 that asterisk H is a glottal stop. However, Winfred P. Lehman instead theorized, based on inconsistent reflexes in Hittite, that there were two asterisk H sounds, a glottal stop, and an H sound H, as in English hat. Jens Elmgard Rasmussen 1983, suggested a consonantal realization for asterisk H as the voiceless glottal fricative H with a syllabic allophone, mid-central unrounded vowel. This is supported by the closeness of 
to e, with which it coalesces in Greek. Its failure, unlike asterisk h and asterisk h, to create an auxiliary vowel in Greek and Tocharian when it occurs between a semivowel and a consonant, and the typological likelihood of a h, given the presence of aspirated consonants in pi. In 2004, Alwyn Cloakhorst argued that the hieroglyphic Luwian sign number 19, conventionally transcribed a stood for a distinct from a sign number 450 a, and represents the reflex of asterisk h this would support the hypothesis that asterisk h or at least some cases of it was Later, Cloakhorst 2006 claimed that also Hittite preserves pi asterisk h as a glottal stop, visible in words like Hittite esz. He is, although some details of Cloakhorst's arguments could not be maintained, his theory can be confirmed. An occasionally advanced idea that the laryngeals were dorsal fricatives corresponding directly to the three traditionally reconstructed series of dorsal stops palatal, velar, and labiovelar suggests a further possibility a palatal fricative. C. Asterisk H From what is known of such phonetic conditioning in contemporary languages, notably Semitic languages, asterisk H the a coloring laryngeal could have been a pharyngeal fricative such as H and Pharyngeal consonants like the Arabic letter H, H as in Muhammad often cause a coloring in the Semitic languages. Uvular fricatives, however, may also color vowels, thus chi is also a noteworthy candidate. Weiss 2016 suggests that this was the case in Proto-Indo-European proper, and that a shift from uvular into pharyngeal H may have been a common innovation of the non-Anatolian languages before the consonant's eventual loss. Rasmussen 1983 suggested a consonantal realization for asterisk h as a voiceless velar fricative x with a syllabic allophone i.e. a near open central vowel topic asterisk h Likewise it is generally assumed that asterisk H was rounded labialized due to its O-coloring effects. It is often taken to have been voiced based on the perfect form asterisk pi bh from the root asterisk peh drink". Rasmussen has chosen a consonantal realization for asterisk H as a voiced labialized velar fricative, with a syllabic allophone, i.e. a close mid-central rounded vowel. <laughs> Possible other uvulars Common assumptions or not, it is obvious that rounding alone asterisk w, asterisk k, asterisk g, asterisk g did not color vowels in pi, some additional or alternative feature like lowered larynx as appropriate for laryngeals in the Semitic sense might well have had the appropriate influence on the formants of adjacent vowels. It has been pointed out that pi asterisk a in verb roots, such as asterisk cap, take, has a number of peculiarities, it doesn't as a rule participate in oblaut, and it occurs with noticeable frequency in roots like asterisk cap, viz., with a plain velar stop 
But there is a chicken and egg problem here, if there is in fact any significance to this co-occurrence, does the plain velar articulation account for the avocalism, or vice versa? The same is shown by some i.e. Semitic correspondences, whether these are due to prehistoric borrowing or to a common ancestor see Nostratic theory and Indo-Semitic languages Greek Odyssemi, Odyssemi. Topic. I hate from IE root HDW Arabic adu Enemy Dialectal e.g. Ionic Greek esse away C equals it equals a wind blows from IE root HWH, Arabic Hawa equals air. In any event, if pi asterisk h is regarded as somehow in the same series as the plane velar stops is usually reconstructed, some may adduce that its existence is considerably better founded than the existence of the plane velar stops. However, we must also note that in the traditional account, there is an overabundance of marked velar stops asterisk k, asterisk g, asterisk versus plain ones asterisk k, asterisk g, asterisk g. This suggests that indeed what has been labeled palatal is rather plain, while plain is something else, such as a uvular plosive. This then may add to the evidence in favor of asterisk H being uvular chi, thus also solving the source of its vowel coloring tendencies. <laughs> Support for theory from daughter languages Equals the hypothetical existence of laryngeals in pi finds support in the body of daughter language cognates which can be most efficiently explained through simple rules of development. Equals topic direct reflexes of laryngeals. Equals. Unambiguous examples are confined to Anatolian languages. Words with Hittite H, HH, Luwian H, and Lycian X are explained as reflexes of pi roots with H. Some Hittitologists have also proposed that H was preserved in Hittite as H although only word initially and after a resonant. Cortland holds that H was preserved before all vowels except asterisk O. Similarly, Cloakhorst believes they were lost before resonance as well. <laughs> In Germanic Reconstructed instances of asterisk kw in Proto-Germanic have been explained as reflexes of pi asterisk hw and possibly asterisk hw, a process known as Cowgill's law. The proposal has been challenged but is defended by Don Ring. Topic in Albanian. In the Albanian language, a minority view proposes that some instances of word initial H continue a laryngeal consonant. In Western Iranian Martin Kumal has proposed that some initial X and H in contemporary Western Iranian languages, commonly thought to be prothetic, are instead direct survivals of asterisk H, lost in epigraphic Old Persian but retained in 
marginal dialects, ancestral among others to modern Persian. Topic: <laughs> Proposed indirect reflexes. In all other daughter languages, comparison of the cognates can support only hypothetical intermediary sounds derived from pi combinations of vowels and laryngeals. Some indirect reflexes are required to support the examples above where the existence of laryngeals is uncontested. The proposals in this table account only for attested forms in daughter languages. Extensive scholarship has produced a large body of cognates which may be identified as reflexes of a small set of hypothetical intermediary sound, including those in the table above. Individual sets of cognates are explicable by other hypotheses but the sheer bulk of data and the elegance of the laryngeal explanation has led to widespread acceptance in principle. <laughs> Vowel coloration and lengthening In the proposed Anatolian language reflexes above, only some of the vowel sounds reflect pi asterisk e. In the daughter languages in general, many vowel sounds are not obvious reflexes. The theory explains this as the result of 1 h coloration. Pi asterisk e is colored, i.e., its sound value is changed before or after h and h, but not when next to h. Point two h loss. Any of the three laryngeals symbolized here as h is lost before a short vowel. Laryngeals are also lost before another consonant symbolized here as c, with consequent lengthening of the preceding vowel. The results of H coloration and H loss are recognized in daughter language reflexes such as those in the table below. <laughs> Greek triple reflex versus schwa Between three phonological contexts, Greek reflexes display a regular vowel pattern that is absent from the supposed cognates in other daughter languages. Before the development of laryngeal theory, scholars compared Greek, Latin and Sanskrit then considered earliest daughter languages and concluded the existence in these contexts of a schwa vowel in pi, the so-called schwa indogermanicum. The contexts are, 1, between consonants short vowel, 2, word initial before a consonant short vowel, 3, combined with a liquid or nasal consonant r, l, m, n, long vowel. 1 between consonants Latin displays a and Sanskrit i, whereas Greek displays e, a or o2 word initial before a consonant. Greek alone displays e, a or o3 combined with a liquid or nasal. Latin displays a liquid, nasal consonant followed by a, Sanskrit displays either ear, er or the vowel a alone, Greek displays a liquid, nasal consonant followed by e, a, in dialects such as Doric or Olaryngeal theory provides a more elegant general description than reconstructed schwa by assuming that the Greek vowels are derived through vowel coloring and h loss from from pi h, 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 constituting a so-called triple reflex. One between consonants An explanation is provided for the existence of three vowel reflexes in Greek corresponding to single reflexes in Latin and in Sanskrit two-word initial. 
The assumption of asterisk HC in π yields an explanation for a dichotomy exhibited below between cognates in the Anatolian, Greek and Armenian languages reflexes with initial a and cognates in the remaining daughters which lack that syllable. The theory assumes initial asterisk HE in the π root, which has been lost in most of the daughter languages, asterisk H stir star, Hittite hasterza, Greek aster, Armenian osti, Latin stella, Sanskrit tar asterisk, h wes, live, spend time, Hittite huis, live, Greek a, w, e s a, I spent a night, Sanskrit vasati, spend the night, English was asterisk, h n e r, man, Greek aner, Armenian air, from asterisk a n i r, oskan n i i r, R, Sanskrit nar 3 combined with a liquid or nasal. These presumed sonorant reflexes are completely distinct from those deemed to have developed from single phonemes. The phonology of the sonorant examples in the previous table can only be explained by the presence of an adjacent phonemes in pi. Assuming the phonemes to be a following H, H or H allows the same rules of vowel coloration and H loss to apply to both π asterisk E and π sonorants. <laughs> Support from Greek oblaut The hypothetical values for sounds with laryngeals after H coloration and H loss such as seen above in the triple reflex draw much of their support for the regularization they allow in oblaut patterns, specifically the uncontested patterns found in Greek. Oblaut in the root in the following table, each row shows undisputed Greek cognates sharing the three oblaut grades of a root. The four sonorants and the two semi-vowel are represented as individual letters, other consonants as C and the vowel or its absence as V. The reconstructed pi e grade and zero grade of the above roots may be arranged as follows. An extension of the table to pi roots ending in presumed laryngeals allows many Greek cognates to follow a regular oblaut pattern. Topic: <inaudible> Oblaut in the suffix. The first row of the following table shows how uncontested cognates relate to reconstructed pi stems with E grade or zero grade roots, followed by E grade or zero grade of the suffix W. The remaining rows show how the oblaut pattern of other cognates is preserved if the stems are presumed to include the suffixes H, H, H. Intervocalic H loss In the preceding sections, forms in the daughter languages were explained as reflexes of laryngeals in pi stems. Since these stems are judged to have contained only one vowel, the explanations involved H loss either when a vowel preceded or when a vowel followed. However, the possibility of H loss between two vowels is present when a stem combines with an inflectional suffix. It has been proposed that pi H loss resulted in hiatus, which in turn was contracted to a vowel sound distinct from other long vowels by being disyllabic or of extra length. Early Indo-Iranian disyllables 
A number of long vowels in Avestan were pronounced as two syllables, and some examples also exist in early Sanskrit, particularly in the Rig Veda. These can be explained as reflexes of contraction following a hiatus caused by the loss of intervocalic H in pi. Proto-Germanic Trimaric O The reconstructed phonology of Proto-Germanic PGMC, the presumed ancestor of the Germanic languages, includes a long asterisk O phoneme, which is in turn the reflex of Pi A. As outlined above laryngeal theory has identified instances of pi a as reflexes of earlier asterisk h e, asterisk a or asterisk a before a consonant. However, a distinct long pgmc asterisk o phoneme has been recognized with a different set of reflexes in daughter Germanic languages. The vowel length has been calculated by observing the effect of the shortening of final vowels in Gothic. Reflexes of trimaric or overlong asterisk o are found in the final syllable of nouns or verbs, and are thus associated with inflectional endings. Thus four PGMC sounds are proposed, shown here with Gothic and Old English reflexes. A somewhat different contrast is observed in endings with final asterisk z. Laryngeal theory preserves regularities in declensions and conjugations by explaining the trimaric sound as a reflex of h loss between vowels followed by contraction. Thus, by h loss asterisk o ho greater than asterisk u greater than asterisk o. By h coloration and h loss asterisk a e greater than asterisk a greater than asterisk a greater than asterisk o. Trimaric asterisk o is also reconstructed as word final in contexts that are not explained by laryngeal theory. Topic: Balto-Slavic long vowel accent. The reconstructed phonology of the Balto-Slavic languages posits two distinct long vowels in almost exact correspondence to bimoric and trimoric vowels in Proto-Germanic. The Balto-Slavic vowels are distinguished not by length but by intonation. Long vowels with circumflex accent correspond to PGMC trimoric vowels. A significant proportion of long vowels with acute accent, also described as with acute register, correspond to PGMC bimoric vowels. These correspondences have led to the suggestion that the split between them occurred in the last common ancestor of the two daughters. It has been suggested that acute intonation was associated with glottalization, a suggestion supported by glottalized reflexes in Latvian. This could lend support to a theory that laryngeal consonants developed into glottal stops before their disappearance in Balto-Slavic and Proto-Germanic. H loss adjacent to other sounds after stop consonants A significant number of instances of voiceless aspirates in the Indo-Iranian languages may be explained as reflexes of pi stop consonants immediately followed by laryngeals asterisk ch greater than asterisk c Topic after resonance 
high resonance sonorance asterisk r asterisk l asterisk m asterisk n are predicted to become consonantal allophones asterisk r l asterisk m n when immediately followed by a vowel Using R to symbolize any resonant sonorant and V for any vowel, asterisk R V greater than asterisk R V. Instances in the daughter languages of a vocalic resonant immediately followed by a vowel R V are explained as reflexes of pi asterisk R H V with a laryngeal between the resonant and the vowel giving rise to a vocalic allophone. This original vocalic quality was preserved following H loss. Topic: Next to semi-vowels. See Holtzman's law. Laryngeal theory has been used to explain the occurrence of a reconstructed sound change known as Holtzmann's law or sharpening German Verscharfung in North Germanic and East Germanic languages. Existing theory explains that pi semivowels asterisk y and asterisk w were doubled to pgmc asterisk yy and asterisk ww, and that these in turn became ddj and ggw respectively in Gothic and ggj and ggw in early North Germanic languages. However, existing theory had difficulty in predicting which instances of pi semivowels led to sharpening and which instances failed to do so. The new explanation proposes that words exhibiting sharpening are derived from pi words with laryngeals. Many of these techniques rely on the laryngeal being preceded by a vowel, and so they are not readily applicable for word initial laryngeals except in Greek and Armenian. However, occasionally languages have compounds in which a medial vowel is unexpectedly lengthened or otherwise shows the effect of a following laryngeal. This shows that the second word originally began with a laryngeal, and that this laryngeal still existed at the time the compound was formed. Topic laryngeals In the Uralic languages further evidence of the laryngeals has been found in Uralic languages. While Proto-Uralic and Pi have not been demonstrated to be genetically related, some word correspondences between Uralic and Indo-European have been identified as likely borrowings from very early Indo-European dialects to early Uralic dialects. One example is the widespread word family including on the Uralic side e.g. Hungarian mez, Finnish and Estonian messi, met e, mari mu, my, komi ma, ma, honey, suggesting Proto-Uralic asterisk meti, and on the Indo-European side, English mead, Greek methu wine, German met honey wine, Slavic med, and Sanskrit madu honey, etc. There are several criteria to date such borrowings, the most reliable ones coming from historical phonology. For example, Finnic porces, Urzia percos, pert, sos, moxa perch, pure, ts, piglet presuppose a common proto form asterisk porcas at an earlier stage of development. This is etymologized as a loanword from pi asterisk pork, which gives Latin porcus hog, Slavic porce pig, oe fear greater than engl, pharaoh young pig, Lithuanian par, sas piglet, castrated boar. Here loaning must have occurred predating the depalatalization of centum languages, and the later development into the Baltic asterisk s reflected as fin, h in borrowings, or Iranian asterisk c medially reflected as fin. t. 
If the pi distinction between palatovelars and plane velars is reconstructed as one of velars and uvulars, then instead of the former condition also a lower limit can be set up for the loan, as postdating the satomization of asterisk K into a palatalized stop or affricate. Work particularly associated with research of the scholar Jorma Koivuleto has identified a number of additions to the list of Finnic loanwords from an Indo-European source or sources whose particular interest is the apparent correlation of pi laryngeals with three post-alveolar phonemes or their later reflexes in the Finnic forms. If so, this would point to a great antiquity for the borrowings, since no attested Indo-European language neighbouring Uralic has consonants as reflexes of laryngeals. And it would bolster the idea that laryngeals were phonetically distinctly consonantal. However, it should be noted that Koivuleto's theories are not universally accepted and have been sharply criticized e by Finno-Ugrasist Eugene Helemski because many of the reconstructions involve a great deal of far-fetched hypotheses and the chronology is not in good agreement with the history of Bronze Age and Iron Age migrations in the Eastern Europe established by archaeologists and historians. Three Uralic phonemes have been posited to reflect pi laryngeals. In post-vocalic positions both the post-alveolar fricatives that ever existed in Uralic are represented, firstly a possibly velar one, theoretically reconstructed much as the pi laryngeals conventionally marked asterisk x, in the very oldest borrowings and secondly a grooved one asterisk s as in shu becoming modern Finnic h in some younger ones. The velar plosive K is the third reflex and the only one found word initially. In intervocalic position the reflex K is probably younger than either of the two former ones. The fact that Finno-Ugric may have plosive reflexes for pi laryngeals is to be expected under well-documented Finnic phonological behavior and does not mean much for tracing the phonetic value of pi laryngeals cf. Finnish Kansa people the correspondences do not differentiate between h, h and h. Thus pi laryngeals correspond to the pu laryngeal asterisk x in wordstoms like, Finnish na inan woman, na ras female Sanskrit gn goddess, oir, emna gen, of ben, tilde Greek goon woman cognate to engl. Queen Finnish su ta tilde samak asterisk suk to row Finnish tuo bring tilde samak asterisk tuke tilde tundra nenets tas give Greek didomi lot do old lith duomi give Hittite da take note the consonantal reflex k in samak. Pi laryngeals correspond to Finnic asterisk h, whose normal origin is a pre-Finnic fricative asterisk s in wordstoms like Finnish roto, medical plant, green herb, gmc, asterisk grew, green growth, greater than Swedish grod, germ, shoot, Old Finnish inhi, m inan, human being, Sanskrit j, born, offspring, descendant, gmc. Asterisk kunja generation, lineage, K and pi laryngeals correspond to pre-Finnic asterisk K in wordstoms like Finnish kesa, summer, Balto Slavic asterisk isini, autumn, Gothic asans, summer, Finnish kaski, burnt over clearing, GMC. Asterisk askon ashes Finnish koke to perceive sense Greek opsomai look observe cognate to lot oculus i Finnish kulk to go walk wander tilde Hungarian halid to go walk 
proceed Greek polomai originally to be moving Sanskrit karati goes walks wanders about cognate lot collier to till cultivate inhabit Finnish teke do make tilde Hungarian tev te tez to do make put place Greek tithemi Sanskrit didhati put place but do make in the Western IE languages e.g. the Germanic forms do, German ton, etc., and Latin facio though oe don and into early modern English still sometimes means put, and still does in Dutch and colloquial German. This list is not exhaustive, especially when one also considers a number of etymologies with laryngeal reflexes in Finno-Ugric languages other than Finnish. For most cases no other plausible etymology exists. While some single etymologies may be challenged, the case for this oldest stratum itself seems conclusive from the Uralic point of view, and corresponds well with all that is known about the dating of the other most ancient borrowings and about contacts with Indo-European populations. Yet acceptance for this evidence is far from unanimous among Indo-European linguists. Some even regard the hypothesis as controversial. See above. Topic: <laughs> Pi-Laryngeals and Proto-Semitic. Several linguists have posited a relationship between Pi and Semitic, almost right after the discovery of Hittite. Among these were Hermann Mahler, though a few had argued that such a relationship existed long before the 20th century, like Richard Lepsius in 1836. The postulated correspondences between the IE laryngeals and that of Semitic assist in demonstrating their evident existence. Given here are a few lexical comparisons between the two respective proto languages. Semitic by to want, desire, tilde pi asterisk, hyeb, futuer. Semitic mm y tilde pi asterisk hm to take Semitic in a in on by tilde pi asterisk hn greater than Sanskrit ni tilde Greek anope Semitic anapu tilde pi asterisk h egg home i Semitic dw to pass over, move, run, tilde pi asterisk, weHD to pass through Semitic ly to rise, grow, go up, be high, tilde pi asterisk, hl to grow, nourish Semitic kw, Arabic aka to rise, be big, tilde pi asterisk, hewg to grow, nourish. Semitic l, next, in addition, tilde pi asterisk, hl, in Semitic, Arabic anon, side, and from, for, upon, in, tilde pi asterisk, hnhe, u, on. Topic. Explanation of oblaut and other vowel changes A feature of Proto-Indo-European morpheme structure was a system of vowel alternations termed oblaut alternate sound", by early German scholars and still generally known by that term except in French, where the term apophony is preferred. Several different such patterns have been discerned, but the commonest one, by a wide margin, is E, O, zero alternation found in a majority of roots, in many verb and noun stems, and even in some affixes the genitive singular ending, for example, is attested as asterisk s, asterisk os, and asterisk s. The different states are called oblaut grades, E-grade and O-grade are together, 
full grades, and the total absence of any vowel is zero grade. Topic Examples Topic root asterisk sed thus the root asterisk sed to sit down roots are traditionally cited in the e grade if they have one has three different shapes asterisk sed asterisk sod and asterisk sd this kind of patterning is found throughout the pi root inventory and is transparent. Asterisk sed, Vedic, asterisk asterisk sed, in Latin sedio, am sitting, Old English sitten, to sit. Seat, chair. Asterisk sod, in Latin solium, throne. In Latin L sporadically replaces D between vowels, said by Roman grammarians to be a Sabine trait. Topic Old Irish Swede to the power of N, su e the, a sitting all details regular from pi asterisk sod yo m, gothic sachin Old English setin to set causative sat perfect greater than Sanskrit sa sat a per Brugman's law. Asterisk SD, in compounds, as asterisk ni, down, plus asterisk SD, equals asterisk niestios, nest, English nest. Equals Topic Roots asterisk do and asterisk sta. Equals in addition to the commonplace roots of consonant plus vowel plus consonant structure, there are also well-attested roots like asterisk d, put place, an asterisk do, give. Mentioned above, these end in a vowel, which is always long in the categories where roots like asterisk sed have full grades, and in those forms where zero grade would be expected. If before an affix beginning with a consonant, we find a short vowel, reconstructed as asterisk or schwa, more formally, schwa primum indogermanicum. An independent schwa", like the one in pi asterisk ter, father, can be identified by the distinctive cross-language correspondences of this vowel that are different from the other five short vowels, before an affix beginning with a vowel, there is no trace of a vowel in the root, as shown below. Whatever caused a short vowel to disappear entirely in roots like asterisk sed, asterisk sod, asterisk sd, it was a reasonable inference that a long vowel under the same conditions would not quite disappear, but would leave a sort of residue. This residue is reflected as i in Indic while dropping in Iranian, it gives variously e, a, o in Greek, it mostly falls together with the reflexes of pi asterisk a in the other languages always bearing in mind that short vowels in non-initial syllables undergo various developments in Italic, Celtic, and Germanic. Asterisk do. Give. In Latin donum, gift. Topic: <inaudible> Old Irish dan, da n, and Sanskrit dana a. A with tonic accent, Greek d do me, reduplicated present. I give. Topic: <inaudible> Sanskrit dadami, Slavic dam, I give. But in the participles, Greek dotos given, Sanskrit dita, Latin datus all asterisk sta stand, in Greek histemi reduplicated present, regular from asterisk c sta, Sanskrit a sta t aorist stood, Latin testamentum testimony third party or the like, Slavic stat to stand. 
but Sanskrit stita stood, Greek stasis a standing, Latin supine infinitive statum to stand. Conventional wisdom lined up roots of the asterisk sed and asterisk do types as follows. But there are other patterns of normal roots, such as those ending with one of the six resonants asterisk y w r l m n, a class of sounds whose peculiarity in Proto-Indo-European is that they are both syllabic vowels, in effect, and consonants, depending on what sounds are adjacent. Topic root asterisk BHER, BHOR, BER tilde BHR asterisk BHER, in Latin ferro equals Greek ferro, Avestan bara, Sanskrit barami, Old Irish bior, Old Norse BER, Old English beer all I carry, Slavic barrow I take, Latin ferculum beer, litter. Implement for carrying Asterisk bhor in Gothic and Scandinavian barn child equals English dial. Bairn Greek foreo I wear clothes frequentative formation asterisk carry around Sanskrit bara burden asterisk bhor o via Brugman's law Slavic vibor choice. Asterisk bur before consonants, Sanskrit bur t a carrying, Gothic gabours, ga bur theta s, Old English gebird, j bide, Old High German gebert all birth asterisk bhr before vowels, ved bibrati three place. They carry. Chariot footboard big enough for two men. Schwa, not as a residue of a long vowel, but like the asterisk r of asterisk b h e r asterisk b h o r asterisk bur, an element that was present in the root in all grades, but which in full grade forms coalesced with an ordinary e o root vowel to make a long vowel, with coloring changed phonetics of the e grade into the bargain. The mystery element was seen by its itself only in zero grade forms x equals syllabic form of the mystery element so sir treated only two of these elements corresponding to r asterisk h and asterisk h Later it was noticed that the explanatory power of the theory, as well as its elegance, were enhanced if a third element were added, R** H, which has the same lengthening and syllabifying properties as the other two but has no effect on the color of adjacent vowels. So Sir offered no suggestion as to the phonetics of these elements, his term for them, coefficients synantiques, was not however a fudge, but merely the term in general use for glides, nasals, and liquids i.e., the pi resonance as in roots like asterisk bher. As mentioned above, in forms like asterisk dwi bhro etymon of Greek defros, above, the new coefficients synantiques unlike the six resonants have no reflexes at all in any daughter language. Thus the compound asterisk m's dheh to fix thought, be devout, become rapt forms a noun asterisk m's dhho seen in Proto-Indo-Iranian asterisk mazda whence Sanskrit meta per meter eta, sacrificial rite, holiness regular development as in Sidur name originally an epithet of the greatest deity. Topic root asterisk bend There is another kind of unproblematic root, in which obstruents flank a resonant. In the zero grade, unlike the case with roots of the asterisk bher type, the resonant is therefore always syllabic, being always between two consonants. An example would be asterisk bend tie, 
bind, asterisk bend, in Germanic forms like Old English binden to tie, bind, Gothic binden, Lithuanian bendras chum, Greek pisma rope, cable, pe circumflex sma, asterisk boned, in Sanskrit banda, bond, fastening, asterisk boned o, grassman's law equals Old Icelandic band, oe band, Old English band, Gothic band, he tied, asterisk bhn, in Sanskrit bada, league, English bind and bound show the effects of secondary, Middle English, vowel lengthening, the original length is preserved in bundle, this is all straightforward and such roots fit directly into the overall patterns. Less so are certain roots that seem sometimes to go like the asterisk bher type, and sometimes to be unlike anything else, with for example long syllabics in the zero grades while at times pointing to a two-vowel root structure. These roots are variously called heavy bases, dis s illabic roots, and set roots, the last being a term from Panini's grammar. It will be explained below. Topic root asterisk gen, asterisk gone, asterisk gnn, asterisk for example, the root be born, arise is given in the usual etymological dictionaries as follows, a asterisk gen, asterisk gone, asterisk gnn, b asterisk gen, asterisk gone, asterisk the a forms occur when the root is followed by an affix beginning with a vowel, the b form when the affix begins with a consonant. As mentioned, the full grade a forms look just like the asterisk bher type, but the zero grades always and only have reflexes of syllabic resonance, just like the asterisk bend type, and unlike any other type, there is a second root vowel always and only asterisk, following the second consonant, asterisk gen, a pi asterisk genos newt s stem race clan greater than Greek Homeric genos eos Sanskrit janas Avestan zano Latin genus aris b Greek genetes begetter father genesis origin Sanskrit yani man birth lineage yani tar progenitor father Latin genitus begotten Asterisk gone e a Sanskrit janayati beget. Topic Old English senon kenon race o grade o stem Greek gonos o offspring b Sanskrit jajana three s g was born clan family equals o e sin kun English kin Rigvedic jajanor three p l dot perfect b Sanskrit jata born equals Latin natus old Latin natus and c f forms like cognatus related by birth Greek Cassi netos brother Greek Nesios belonging to the race the e in these Greek forms can be shown to be original not Attic Ionic developments from Proto-Greek asterisk a on the term set the Paninian term set that is saw it is literally with an i this refers to the fact that roots so designated, like jan, be born, have an i between the root and the suffix, as we've seen in Sanskrit janatar, janaman, janatva, a gerund. Cf. Such formations built to anit without an i roots, such as han, slay, hantar, slayer, hanman, a slaying, hantva, gerund. In Panini's analysis, this i is a linking vowel, not properly a part of either the root or the suffix. It is simply that some roots are in effect in the list consisting of the roots that, as we would put it, take an i. But historians have the advantage here, the peculiarities of alternation, the presence of i, and the fact that the only vowel allowed in second place in a root happens to be asterisk 
are all neatly explained once asterisk gen and the like were understood to be properly asterisk gen. That is, the patterns of alternation, from the point of view of Indo-European, were simply those of asterisk bend, with the additional detail that asterisk H, unlike obstruence stops and asterisk S would become a syllable between two consonants, hence the asterisk gen shape in the type B formations, above. Topic discussion The startling reflexes of these roots in zero grade before a consonant in this case, Sanskrit A, Greek Ne, Latin Na, Lithuanian In is explained by the lengthening of the originally perfectly ordinary syllabic resonant before the lost laryngeal, while the same laryngeal protects the syllabic status of the preceding resonant even before an affix beginning with a vowel. The archaic Vedic form Jajanur cited above is structurally quite the same as a form like asterisk da doctors er they saw incidentally, redesigning the root as asterisk gen has another consequence. Several of the Sanskrit forms cited above come from what look like O-grade root vowels in open syllables, but fail to lengthen to a per Brugman's law. All becomes clear when it is understood that in such forms as asterisk gone before a vowel, the asterisk O is not in fact in an open syllable. And in turn, that means that a form like Jajana was born, which apparently does show the action of Brugman's law, is actually a false witness. In the Sanskrit perfect tense, the whole class of set roots, en masse, acquired the shape of the init three sing forms. See Brugman's law for further discussion. Other roots There are also roots ending in a stop followed by a laryngeal, as asterisk pleth, asterisk peelth, spread, flatten, from which Sanskrit prithu broad mask, equals avestan pr theta u, perthivi fem, Greek platus zero grade, skt, prothamon wideness full grade, Greek platamon flat stone. The laryngeal explains a the change of asterisk t to asterisk th in Proto-Indo-Iranian, b the correspondence between Greek a, Sanskrit i and no vowel in Avestan, Avestan pr theta y broad fem, in two syllables versus Sanskrit prathivi in three. Caution has to be used in interpreting data from Indic in particular. Sanskrit remained in use as a poetic, scientific, and classical language for many centuries, and the multitude of inherited patterns of alternation of obscure motivation such as the division into set and init roots provided models for coining new forms on the wrong patterns. There are many forms like tercita thirsty and tanaman slenderness that is set formations to unequivocally init roots and conversely init forms like piparti fills piarta filled to securely set roots cf the real past participle perna Sanskrit preserves the effects of laryngeal phonology with wonderful clarity, but looks upon the historical linguist with a threatening eye, for even in Vedic Sanskrit, the evidence has to be weighed carefully with due concern for the antiquity of the forms and the overall texture of the data. It is no help that Proto Indo European itself had roots which varied somewhat in their makeup, as asterisk gu and asterisk gude, both poor, and some of these root extensions, as they are called, for want of any more analytical term, are, unluckily, laryngeals, stray laryngeals can be found in isolated or seemingly isolated forms, here the three-way Greek reflexes of syllabic asterisk h, asterisk h, asterisk h are particularly helpful, as seen below, comments on the forms fa 
Apollo, asterisk H in Greek animos, wind, cf. Latin animus, breath, spirit, mind, Vedic aniti, breathes, breathe, blow, now asterisk H E N H. Perhaps also Greek hieros, mighty, superhuman, divine, holy, cf. Sanskrit asira, vigorous, energetic. Asterisk H in Greek pater, father equals Sanskrit patar, Old English phaeter, Gothic phaedar, Latin pater. Also asterisk mag, big newt, greater than Greek mega, Sanskrit maha. Asterisk H in Greek eratron, plow equals Welsh A R A D R, Old Norse R, Lithuanian arklas equals topic comments equals the greek forms animos and eratron are particularly valuable because the verb roots in question are extinct in greek as verbs this means that there is no possibility of some sort of analogical interference, as for example happened in the case of Latin eratrum plow, whose shape has been distorted by the verb arare to plow, the exact cognate to the Greek form would have been asterisk eretrum. It used to be standard to explain the root vowels of Greek thetos, statos, dotos, put, stood, given, as analogical. Most scholars nowadays probably take them as original, but in the case of wind and plow, the argument can't even come up. Clarification and citation needed. Consider, namo seeing as animos can be defined as that which is without nome regarding Greek hieros. The pseudo participle affix asterisk ro is added directly to the verb root, so asterisk ish ro greater than asterisk. I sero greater than asterisk I hero greater than hieros with regular throwback of the aspiration to the beginning of the word, and Sanskrit asira. There seems to be no question of the existence of a root asterisk ash vigorously move, cause to move. If the thing began with a laryngeal, and most scholars would agree that it did, it would have to be asterisk h, specifically, and that's a problem. A root of the shape asterisk h h is not possible. Indo-European had no roots of the type asterisk mem, asterisk tet, asterisk dhredh, i.e., with two copies of the same consonant. But Greek attests an earlier and rather more widely attested form of the same meaning, hieros. If we reconstruct asterisk hh, all of our problems are solved in one stroke. The explanation for the hieros, hieros business has long been discussed, without much result. Laryngeal theory now provides the opportunity for an explanation which did not exist before, namely metathesis of the two laryngeals. It is still only a guess, but it is a much simpler and more elegant guess than the guesses available before. The syllabic asterisk h in asterisk ph ter father might not really be isolated. Certain evidence shows that the kinship affix seen in mother, father, etc. might actually have been asterisk h ter instead of asterisk ter. The laryngeal syllabified after a consonant thus Greek pater, Latin pater, Sanskrit patar, Greek thugator, Sanskrit duhitar daughter, but lengthened a preceding vowel thus say Latin mater mother, frater brother, even when the vowel in question was a syllabic resonant, as in Sanskrit yataras husbands wives. Topic laryngeals in morphology Like any other consonant, laryngeals feature in the endings of verbs and nouns and in derivational morphology, the only difference being the greater difficulty of telling what's going on. 
Indo-Iranian, for example, can retain forms that pretty clearly reflect a laryngeal, but there is no way of knowing which one. The following is a rundown of laryngeals in Proto-Indo-European morphology. Asterisk H is seen in the instrumental ending, probably originally indifferent to number, like English expressions of the type by hand and on foot. In Sanskrit, feminine I and U stems have instrumentals in I, U, respectively. In the Rigveda, there are a few old A stems, pio stems with an instrumental in A, but even in that oldest text the usual ending is ina, from the N stems. Greek has some adverbs in E, but more important are the Mycenaean forms like E re pa te with ivory i.e. elephante. E, the marker of the neuter dual was asterisk ih, as in Sanskrit Bharati two carrying ones, newt, namani two names, yuge two yokes. The two eyes is manifestly from asterisk h ek ih, formerly asterisk oki via fully regular sound laws. Intermediately asterisk oki asterisk a derives stative verb senses from eventive roots, pi asterisk sed sit down, asterisk sed a be in a sitting position greater than proto-italic asterisk sed e ye mos we are sitting greater than Latin sedimus. It is clearly attested in Celtic, Italic, Germanic the class four weak verbs, and Baltic, Slavic, with some traces in Indo-Iranian in Avestan the affix seems to form past habitual stems, it seems likely, though it is less certain, that this same asterisk h underlies the nominative accusative dual in o stems, Sanskrit verka, Greek luko two wolves, the alternative Alternative ending O in Sanskrit cuts a small figure in the Rigveda, but eventually becomes the standard form of the O stem dual. Asterisk HS derives desiderative stems as in Sanskrit Jigamzati desires to slay. Slay. This is the source of Greek future tense formations and with the addition of a thematic suffix asterisk ye, o, the Indo-Iranian one as well, barasyati will carry. May he be, simus may we be, Sanskrit syat may he be, and so on, asterisk h is seen as the marker of the neuter plural, asterisk h in the consonant stems, asterisk a in the vowel stems. Much leveling and remodeling is seen in the daughter languages that preserve any ending at all, thus Latin has generalized asterisk a throughout the noun system later regularly shortened to a, Greek generalized a. The categories masculine, feminine plainly did not exist in the most original form of Proto-Indo-European, and there are very few noun types which are formally different in the two genders. The formal differences are mostly to be seen in adjectives and not all of them and pronouns. Both types of derived feminine stems feature asterisk h, a type that is patently derived from the o stem nominals, and an oblouting type showing alternations between asterisk y and asterisk ih. Both are peculiar in having no actual marker for the nominative singular, and at least as far as the asterisk a type, two things seem clear, it is based on the o stems, and the nom.sg, is probably in origin a neuter plural. An archaic trait of Indo-European morphosyntax is that plural neuter nouns construe with singular verbs, and quite possibly asterisk yuge was not so much yokes in our sense, but yokage, a harnessing up, once that much is thought of, 
however, it is not easy to pin down the details of the a stems in the Indo-European languages outside of Anatolia, and such an analysis sheds no light at all on the asterisk ye, asterisk ih stems, which like the asterisk a stems form feminine adjective stems and derived nouns e.g. Sanskrit Devi goddess from Deva god, but unlike the a stems have no foundation in in any neuter category, asterisk a seems to have formed factative verbs, as in asterisk new a to renew, make new again, as seen in Latin novare, Greek neo and Hittite ne wa a ha and t participle all renew, but all three with the pregnant sense of plow anew, return fallow land to cultivation. Asterisk h marked the first person singular, with a somewhat confusing distribution, in the thematic active the familiar O ending of Greek and Latin, and Indo-Iranian A me, and also in the perfect tense not really a tense in pi, asterisk he as in Greek oida I know. I take. Directive case. No such case is found in Indo-European noun paradigms, but such a construct accounts for a curious collection of Hittite forms like ne pi sa in to the sky, tak na to into the ground, aru na to the sea. These are sometimes explained as o stem datives in a upwards cato downwards Latin quo wither eo to that place, and perhaps even the Indic preposition proverbo to ward, which has no satisfactory competing etymology. These forms must be distinguished from the similar-looking ones formed to the ablative in asterisk odd and with a distinctive fromness sense Greek opo when from where topic criticism throughout its history the laryngeal theory in its various forms has been subject to extensive criticism and revision the original argument of Saussure was not accepted by any of the neogrammarians. The school, primarily based at the University of Leipzig, then reigning at the cutting edge of Indo-European linguistics, several of them attacked the memoir savagely. Osthoff's criticism was particularly virulent, often descending into personal invective. For the first half century of its existence, the laryngeal theory was widely seen as an eccentric fancy of outsiders. In Germany, it was totally rejected. Among its early proponents were Hermann Mahler, who extended Saussure's system with a third, non-coloring laryngeal, Albert Cuny, Holger Peterson and Karl Ostier. The fact that these scholars were engaged in highly speculative long-range linguistic comparison further contributed to its isolation. Although the Founding Fathers were able to provide some indirect evidence of a lost consonantal element for example, the origin of the Indo-Iranian voiceless aspirates in asterisk ch sequences and the oblaut pattern of the so-called heavy bases, asterisk sir tilde asterisk cr, in the traditional formulation, the direct evidence so crucial for the neogrammarian thinking was lacking. Thinking. Saussure's structural considerations were foreign to the leading contemporary linguists. After Kurilovics's convincing demonstration that the Hittite language preserved at least some of Saussure's coefficients synantiques, the focus of the debate shifted. It was still unclear how many laryngeals are to be posited to account for the new facts and what effect they have had exactly. Kurilovich, after a while, settled on four laryngeals, an approach further accepted by Sapper, Sturtevant, and through them much of American linguistics. The three laryngeal system was defended, among others, by Walter Coover and Emile Benvenisti. 
Many individual proposals were made, which assumed up to ten laryngeals André Martinet. While some scholars, like Heinz Kronasser and Giuliano Bonfante, attempted to disregard Anatolian evidence altogether, the minimal serious proposal with roots in Peterson's early ideas was put forward by Hans Hendriksen, Louis Hamerick, and later Ladislav Z. Gusta, who assumed a single H phoneme without vowel coloring effects. By 2000s, however, a widespread, though not unanimous agreement was reached in the field on reconstructing Moeller's three laryngeals. One of the last major critics of this approach was Oswald Zemmerani, who subscribed to a theory similar to Zagusta's Zemmerani 1996. Today the laryngeal theory is almost universally accepted in this new standard form. Nevertheless, marginal attempts to undermine its bases are occasionally undertaken. <laughs> <laughs> 